welcome to another episode of Mr. Puzzle. Today we're going to talk about two puzzles, but only solve one of them. And the two puzzles we're going to talk about is the tumbler and the double tumbler. Both of them are designed and made by John Keegan in the US. And they come with instructions, of course, here with these two business cards, which are made by, or out of aluminum, by the way, pretty cool. And they are come here with a remark, a different twist on a classic by Will Strybosch. And I think they are, or he is referring here to this puzzle here called the first cylinder, which I solved a long time ago. If you're interested to see this one, link up here. This is definitely one of my all time favorite puzzles. Therefore, I was really excited to get my hands on these two puzzles. Today, we're gonna focus on this here, the tumbler. Sounds kind of similar but this definitely looks a little bit different. It has two caps, one up here and one down here. Oh, and this one twists very smooth, so I would assume there's kind of a bearing or something inside. And you have also these gaps here where you can look inside what's going on. And it also comes with some objectives and it says use indicating marks to find puzzle alignment, release tumblers into the body of puzzle and release tumbler end cap. Maybe this is already a little bit too much information given. I don't know, haven't tried it yet. In a future video, I will also review, of course, the double tumbler. And if I made both of them, we can make a conclusion, which is the harder one. It should be this one. This is rated with a level 10 and this was a level eight. If this is really true, we're gonna find out later. In addition, I would like to show you some kind of a desk toy. This one actually you have seen before in the picture of the last video, this one here. It was this little golden egg because these are the so-called thinking eggs. Here, on this one you can see it better. Thinking eggs. And this one is the brush version. Each of these thinking eggs is made from a different material. We have a brass version here. This one, and they are just display items too. Just place on your desk to fiddle around with them, to just distract you a little bit from your problems or from if you are stressed or whatever. This one is the revitalizing one, the brass one. This one is the made from holite stone, calming properties. I haven't looked in these three, only in the brass version so far. Yes, and this looks pretty cool. It's made from, really from stone, polished, very well made. Also feels pretty cool if you touch it very smooth. The next one is made from wood. So this is the pine wood version. You can see it here. The significantly lighter, of course, as the other two. This one is by far the heaviest, of course. And this is the strength stone, lava stone. It's probably rather a rough lava stone. Let's just see. Oh no, this is also slightly polished. You can see these pores here. So my personal favorite are definitely these two stone variants. I'm not sure, what about you? Let me know in the comments. I put you also a link where you can get these ones, of course, if you're interested. And even after unboxing them, I can already confirm to you, this is pretty cool stuff to look at and to touch it, especially the stone versions. I really can imagine that this has some cal calming or relaxing effect. And now let's just continue with our two puzzles here. Let's put this one aside for now. And this one is what we're gonna focus today, the tumbler. And after spoiler break, you're gonna see my first attempt trying to open it up. Okay, so let's look again on the objectives. Use indicated marks to find puzzle alignment. Release tumblers into body of puzzle. Release tumbler end cap. No external tools, no banging, tapping. Absolutely no force required. All movements gravity assisted. And that's it. Sounds pretty interesting. This one I'm gonna put aside and wow. If you move it, you can already hear a lot of things going on in here. Not sure how many bearing balls or ball bearings. I'm not sure. Some tell me, some of you guys tell me I should call it ball bearings. Some <laughs> tell me I should call it bearing balls. I call it ball bearings for now. So let's just have a look and check out what I can, what details I can find here. As I mentioned, I can twist this cap here on the top and on the bottom. And as I mentioned, and I can also see it inside here, if I look inside here, down here, you can see there's definitely a bearing installed. And inside, there's also a cylinder. And if I twist the cylinder, you can see that there is, it seems there is something visible. The cylinder inside here is definitely connected to this part of the puzzle. If I twist it, at one point, I can see something moving inside here. Oh, here you can see it, there. 
Something is moving here inside and looks like it's a notch that car is carved out of this middle cylinder going here to the top. There is like a, there's some metal, metal inside here, some metal cylinder. And this is twisting with the cap. In this big cylinder, which is rotating in here, there's another notch which is twisting around this middle cylinder or bar. Oh, and there is also a cutout over here. So this one is different from the other ones. These are all solid material. This one is kind of cut out over here. Yeah. So, and this all together should hopefully help me already getting a clue on how to solve it. So I will now align the notch in this middle cylinder with the notch in the outer cylinder. 60 degrees, we have a mark here on the upper cylinder. While in the lower one, we have only every 90 degrees. Yes, one ball dropped down. I have now one ball down here in the compartment. Try to get another one down. And another one came down. Is this already the trick? So this puzzle seems to be definitely different from the first cylinder, but I think the locking mechanism is probably the same. Maybe there are more than one compartment up here and I need to just move to the next place. So let me just go over here and do the same thing as I did over here where the mark is here. Let me do the same one counter, I twist it now counterclockwise, 90 degrees and do the same one over here. Same move, same idea. Okay, so let's just take some notes of things we know at this point. So there is a lower cylinder, so it's down here. And this cylinder has another cylinder in the middle. This middle cylinder here goes on the top into another cylinder, which is this one here. Let's draw it like this. Both of them, the middle one has a notch. Upper one, the upper cylinder, this one here, has also a notch. Let's say it's it's like here. And if you align this one with this one by twisting, then you can get a ball up and down from the secret compartment, which seems to be somewhere over here. Here are the ball bearings inside. If you align them, a ball bearing can drop down into this lower compartment, which is this one here with the windows. If the ball is able to drop up here inside, they are free and can be moved individual again. The question is, where is this hole? Now it's back in. Now it's completely stuck. And now it's free again. This does not really make sense. And now a second ball came out. So it seems I found the point. I think there's only one ball left up here. So it should be four balls. Oh, I made one step, made it one step further. It seems the last ball dropped out. The question is now. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's back in. Ah, now it's out again. Do I have now four balls out? I can't see it. That's the problem. Here we go, I made it, Whoa! step by step. Four balls as predicted. So at least at one thing I was correct. <laughs> Give me one minute to understand how this works and then I'm gonna explain you in detail. Okay, so I think I got it now how it works. Let me explain you with one ball how it works. Okay, so basically we have here this inner cylinder 
or this inner rod with three different notches. This one is the notch which I painted here before, which you need to go from the top to the bottom. This is this long one. There are two more shorter ones and these are basically traps. So if you, with one ball, drop inside here, then these two, as you have noticed before, they are mechanically connected. So if I twist this one, it will also twist this one because this notch here is interfering with these short notches with one ball here in between which connects the two mechanically. So this is a trap, this is not part of the solution. The other effect, being able to pull out the top cylinder like that much, is provided here by this small notch over here. You see this little piece here on the top? This helps you basically with the positioning of the ball, I think, during the assembly and disassembly, it also is not absolutely necessary to solve the puzzle. It's a nice feature, which definitely causes some confusion, but it's not um, necessary for the solution. So let me demonstrate you with one ball how it works. Okay, I drop the ball in here, and I now will align this notch here with this notch, and then the ball can go over here through this hole in the outer ring and if it's in the outer ring part of the ball is in this ring and then this ring it will interfere and it will lock the puzzle okay and i would like to demonstrate it to you now how it works with one ball so notches are now aligned so one notch is here i will get the ball now into this notch here in the outer one this one and then i will drop it inside the hole these two are aligned the ball will fall down and now if I move it to the outside, I get it into the outer ring and the puzzle is in locked condition again. Actually, uh, unlocking is pretty simple and I, I, don't, I still don't understand why it took me so much time. Because I was focused on the right position and the right thing actually. To unlock it, you position the inner notch here, align it with the outer one. These two are now aligned. Now I need to get the ball in the right place and I can do this by just get it over here and now it will drop in this small notch I showed you before. I can twist it over here and ensure that it will drop inside the notch and now it's in the notch between the two parts and I will be able to take it out. So it's actually pretty simple. It works in a pretty plain way, absolutely reproducible. So once you know the mechanism, you can do it blind and you completely understand what's going on inside here. I hope it was understandable. Let me know in the comments what you think about this puzzle. I should not forget my difficulty rating. My difficulty rating of this puzzle is a, for me, it was a level four out of a maximum of five. It was still doable, but not really some kind of an impossible puzzle where you have no idea where to start. I think a good part of my approach was actually right and my understanding was right on how this worked. What I did not understood was how these traps here worked. I didn't expect to be here these traps inside and also this very confusing thing that happened with the lid that it can pop up a little bit caused by this notch inside here. Super cool puzzle and I now look really really forward to understand on how this thing here works because it has actually one element more, the double thumbler, and I can imagine this adds a lot of difficulty. So basically I understood how to solve it, but I also read that this one is more difficult, which makes it more interesting to me of course, and adds also some nice additional features. So definitely it was recommended to buy both of those. If you would like to learn more about puzzle, if you would like to learn more about puzzling, of course you can also check out my Facebook and Instagram channel. Until next time, keep on puzzling.